All right, let's talk about this. Let's talk about the right to repair. Let's talk about this sort of battle for schematics. And as I think about this uh, in the last day, uh, it makes me think about fixing my dishwasher. So I have to fix my dishwasher. And when I need to fish, fix my dishwasher, I go to sort of the I fix it of dishwasher repair, which is appliance parts pros. And I love it over there. You can type in the model number and you can get access to lots of parts, including wiring diagrams and help. And the guys over there have access to the OEM uh, little bits and pieces that go inside a dishwasher. And it's all very easy and straightforward. It's great. Uh, and and you, know, you know what you're getting. You can see all the diagrams, all the manuals are there and you can totally fix your dishwasher and everybody should do it and it's fantastic. Um, I think that people are either fixers or not fixers and uh, you know, sort of a personality trait and fixers are meant to fix, you know, and they're always gonna fix. Culturally, there used to be a lot more fixers around and we're getting sort of that fixer gene is getting sort of beat out of the population just because manufacturers are making things more difficult. But, but why is that, you know? So here's my question, is there really an inherent difference between an iPhone and a dishwasher? I don't think so. I mean, really, there, there's not. They're both about a $700 thing that kind of makes your life easier. You know, a dishwasher has, it, you know, a source of electricity. It's got a circuit board. It's got a bunch of things that sort of plug in. It's got a pump, water goes around, and it cleans dishes. You know, a cell phone has a battery. It has a circuit board. You know, it has a bunch of things that plug into it, like charge ports and cameras and a screen, and it shows you funny cat videos on the internet. You know, but th th there's not <laughs> there's not a difference. You know, we've been sort of conditioned and trained through this sort of you know marketing ploy um, from the sort of you know very you know business in the business of control that has made Apple super successful. You know, they have conditioned us to sort of believe, you know, that, that what they say is true. And this idea that the iPhone is some, you know, sacrosanct structure that can only be opened by the, you know, professional kids that work at the Apple store. You know, isn't that kind of BS? Yeah, it's total BS. You know, I'm a, I'm a mom. I have no formal training in electronics. I have fixed literally thousands and thousands of iPhones for people from all over the world. You know, this is totally doable. It, it really is. You know, uh, there, there is no magic there. You know, it's a bunch of things plugged together and sometimes they break and you gotta, you gotta try to figure stuff out. So, so what is the difference then between the dishwasher, you know, the dishwasher repair is all very straightforward, ton of information, ton of legitimate parts, and the iPhone. You know, inherently there's no difference. The only difference is the manufacturer of the iPhone is acting like a douchebag, you know? Uh, that the, 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 the choice of the manufacturer to make something that's easy difficult for no reason other than to be a douchebag because you can. You know, and, and that's really that's really a bad move, in my opinion. You know, and that's really all that's going on. So let's think about schematics in general. So, if, you know, so if I if I were you know um, going to sort of argue the other side, you know, I think that I would try to make the case that a schematic is some sort of secret sauce. It's proprietary information. You're not going to go down to to uh, Coca Cola land and demand a recipe to make yourself some some coke, you know, um, and, and I think that that is uh, a flawed uh, reasoning and, and I want people to know that. I want people to know that there, that there is no secret sauce in the actual architecture of the, of the board, you know, that the actual sort of, you know, houses and streets that are a circuit board, the infrastructure there, that's what we need for repair. We need to know who talks to who and uh, that information is here. When we buy the product, we, we buy it, we own it, and we can figure it out. I wanna share with you a comment that I really, really love from uh, my YouTube channel. I just read this tonight. So let me see if I can, if I can find this. Yeah, here we go, Zero Static 72 who's probably born in 1972, which makes him older than me, so I, I love him already. Uh, so he says, a schematic is a work of art, 
and is the copyright work of its authors. This connection pattern of the circuit board can be reverse engineered and a new schematic generated that's a new artwork. The connection pattern is part of the product that cannot be kept secret if a product is sold and can be legally dismantled. Schematics, like any artwork, have value and should not be distributed without the permission of the authors. All manufacturers should make repair information and parts available at a reasonable price to support their customers. Those who do not should be publicly shamed by the community and the media. I love that. I, I just, I, I totally love that. I even, you know, I, I really, I really love everything about that. Um, I, I think that that's, that's, uh, that's absolutely true. You know, that uh, number one, that we can, and I'm going to show you how to do this in a second, we can make a schematic from the board itself. If we are, uh, you know, if we can take it apart and see the board, we can make a schematic. So the only, um, you know, the, 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 there's no secret there. Um, and, I, and I agree that sort of the, the original schematic is sort of more like an artwork than anything else. And that, you know, this, this artwork, you know, could be the property of the, of the manufacturer and therefore distributing it without their, their permission, you know, is, is a little bit not cool. I agree with that, you know, and I don't distribute the schematics. Um, I don't, um, you know, if you ask me, hey, Justin, will you give me the schematics? I'm going to say no. You know, because it's it's not mine to to distribute. However, just like an artwork, you know, I have no problem teaching how to appreciate and understand it. You know, so I don't know anything about art, but if I did, I could see myself putting a painting here and maybe pointing out, you know, how to appreciate some particular detail or nuance or how to understand it. You know. And, and I do the same thing with a schematic to show you a piece of a schematic, how things talk to each other, how they go together so that you can really have an appreciation of that artwork and really understand it, you know, and, and, and use that information uh, to, and that understanding to fix something that you own. And I think that's, that's beautiful, you know, and I, I don't have any problem with that, you know. Um, so, so I, I really love everything about that, and especially this this idea, you know, that uh, that the only sort of you know the only reason to to prevent people from having uh, free, ready, you know, easy access to the schematic, you know, there's there's no there's nothing there that we can't figure out. It's just a pain in the ass for us to have to reverse engineer it. We can do it. It's a pain in the ass. It's the only reason to force us to do that rather than just say, here guys, it's, you know, here, have, have this, you know, make your lives easier. You know, repair is good. You know, if you can, if you can fix this stuff, fantastic. You know, here, here, let me help you out. The only reason to not do that, to cling to the schematic, you know, to try to keep it hidden and and to go after people that try to, to share and encourage others to appreciate the beauty of the schematic uh, is to be a douchebag. That's it, you know, there's, there's no other reason. You know, uh, we, we can fix this stuff, we'll figure it out. We've been fixing the stuff, we've been figuring it out. You know, there are, you know, for the dishwasher world, the parts are easy to get, they're readily available, the information's easy to get, and people are, are fixing their dishwashers. And people are also buying new dishwashers. I am a fixer, and guess what I'm doing this week? I'm buying a new dishwasher. You know, I tried to fix it. I put some time into it. You know, I fixed lots of dishwashers. This time, I give up. I'm buying a new new dishwasher. You know, there's there's nothing that is that is going to, you know, uh, you know, letting people fix things is it's just good for everyone. You know, people will still choose to buy new. You know, people will then take repairable things and get them in the hands of people that can fix them and really get your product in the hands of more people that can use it. It's a good thing. It's good for the environment. It's good for the world. They're, the only reason to make it difficult, there is no reason other than because you can and because you will feel like being a douchebag. And I, I think that's a really bad idea. So what I want to do really, really quickly is to just sort of show you what it looks like to actually have to do the work of creating a schematic from a board. So let's look at this board under the microscope. So this is a standard iPad mini uh, that was sort of, you know, next one in the stack. 
and it's here for a backlight problem. And if we just sort of looked around for a while, it's, it doesn't take very long to find the discolored component that is probably the problem here uh, in the backlight line. And then we, you know, if we wanted to know more about the backlight uh, line, it would look like this. We could, um, you know, we could start here at this component or we could start up at the other piece of information that we know, which is the connector itself. Uh, we know that we plug the screen here into the connector, and so that's uh, going to be kind of our, our starting point. So if we take a multimeter in continuity mode, we can find out all kinds of things on the board. So we can plug it in here to uh, the edge of the component that is uh, clearly burned up, and then we can just start to you know, see, see it where we get a hit as we just sort of rub the multimeter down the board listening for a beep. All right, and so we got a beep there. So that tells us that this pin of the connector is part of the backlight line. What else can we learn? Let's make sure it's not ground, it's not ground. And then let's sort of see, what about the rest of these guys? Oh, these guys are uh, three little probably capacitors on the backlight line. How do we know they're capacitors? One side is on this line and the other side is ground, ground. So, and we can kind of read the board and see that. We can see that there's, you know, these three edges here are talking to ground plane. And these three edges here are all talking to these two pins here. So that's part of the line. So now we can, you know, now we kind of have a path from the connector. There's three caps here, and it goes all the way out to this thing. Now is this thing, what kind of a component is it? Is this a capacitor? Let's see, does it have a path to ground? Nope, so it's probably not a capacitor. And uh, we can, you know, therefore it kind of makes it an inline component. And since it has a little sort of pocket of solder there and it's not beeping across it, then that tells us that it is a blown up inline component and therefore it's uh, likely a filter. Uh, how do we know a filter from a resistor? You know, we could take, take it off the board and start measuring it. We could dissect it and we could start figuring this stuff out. What about the other side? If I try to figure out where else, what else is on this line? And I just start to, you know, Oops, I think I hit ground. There we go. All right, let's just start listening and probing around. Up, oh, and we got a hit over here. Okay, so there's three caps here. And this guy. All right, so what does that tell us? Let's see, what kind of a component is that thing? I see it has lines on it, so that means it's probably something directional, like a diode. I could measure across it and see that it measures like a diode with my multimeter. Are these uh, capacitors? Let's see. Uh, yeah, that side is ground, and this side is all on that backlight line. And these are big capacitors and I expect to have big capacitors on something like a backlight line. So if I've got a diode and I've got some big smoothing capacitors, where's my coil? Well, gee, I wonder if it's this thing here that shares, I can read the board, something that's sharing, the, this diode is sharing the board here with this coil. And my multimeter can beep there and of course beep across the coil because the coil is just a coil of wire. All right, so that makes a lot of sense from what I expect for a DC boost circuit like a backlight uh, circuit. I have a coil, I've got a diode, I've got three uh, larger caps here, uh, I found a filter, I found uh, some little, little caps and a path to a connector for an LCD. That's all very consistent with backlight. The only thing that I'm missing is a chip, so I can start looking around. If I know that this side of the coil is connected to the diode, then what is this side connected to? Probably the chip, so I can start looking around. Now in order to actually find the chip, I'm gonna have to take these big chips off the board, so I'll have to destroy it, oh man, and buy a new iPad mini. So I'll have to take these chips off, 
And if I did that, then I would have a whole bunch of pads under there and I start beeping around and eventually I could figure it out. And that's what it would look like. And so I would find the other end of the backlight circuit, which is under the power management chip. And that's how, that's how I would do it. You know, it's a big pain in the ass. Oh man, it would be a pain to take desolder the PMIC and try to find out, you know, which, uh, which pad was which. But then I could write a schematic. I could draw my own picture if I wanted to. I could say, you know, there's a, you know, LCD connector that I could make up my own name for it. I'm going to call it, you know, Jessa One. <laughs> and, and it's got all these pins on it. And then this pin here went to, there were three uh, capacitors on here. And then it went to a filter and I could just write backlight filter on it. And then after the filter, I found that there was a diode and attached to, I think it was this side of the diode, there were, uh, ah, attached to the diode, there were three bigger caps. And then it went to a coil, backlight coil. And then the other side went to a chip. And I could figure out exactly what the address was and make, a, make something that looked like this. I could take a picture of the board and kind of overlay that information. And I could make a beautiful artwork that would say, made by Jessa, please share everyone fix as much stuff as you can because I'm not a douchebag and that's what it would be like. So here's the point. The point is that, you know, you can prevent people from having access to schematics if you want, because you can probably, but <laughs> the only thing it's going to do is make you a douchebag. That's it. It's not going to actually prevent people from fixing stuff. You're just making it harder to fix stuff. People don't like that. It just makes you a douchebag. You know, it's not going to actually make people stop fixing your stuff. Why do you want people to stop fixing your stuff? That doesn't make any sense. And here's the deal with being a douchebag. People don't like douchebags. They don't want to buy products that were, you know, <laughs> they don't want to buy products that are, that are made by arrogant douchebags that won't let anybody else fix their stuff. They don't want to buy stuff by people that are so, so arrogant as to think that there's something inherently special about the pile of electrons going through a cell phone that's different than the ones that are going through a dishwasher. They're not different. They're the same. Stop being a douchebag. Let people fix the stuff. That's it.